Welcome to Ridgecrest Talk. I'm Tanya Pyle, your host, and my guest today from the Literacy Council is uh, are mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Laura, Laura. Mm -hmm. uh, Miller, mm -hmm. Joy sure. Young, mm -hmm. and Diana Engel. Engel. Eagleton. Eagleton. Thank mm -hmm. you. It's my first time meeting uh, Diana, so sorry about that. Diana okay. is the president of the group. Joy is retired. the retired president, and uh, I associate you with, as the founder of the group, but you told me once there was actually um, like a missionary group that handled this, or tell, tell me about how you became involved. Well, I used to teach reading at the schools, mm -hmm. and then I found out about this particular lady, Lucille Bergdahl, and she and her husband were very involved with literacy down in south part of California, All right. and was the president of the units down there, and when she came to Ridgecrest, she said, oh, well, we need to have uh, reading and um, learning for people who do not speak English. So I thought, well, that seems interesting, so I got involved. And I've been All there right. since 1972. All right. Well, and they, they sort of got you involved, and then they said... Um, yeah, and then they moved in 1990, so then I was my helpers. <laughs> you, you got your helpers yeah. now, but you yeah. sort of uh, well, single-handedly... Well, training. We had to be uh, certified to be trainers, so uh -huh. I did that from 1990 all by myself. Well, I had helpers, but... Um, and, and you use mm -hmm. a program developed by Dr. Laubach. Tell yes. us about that. Well, Dr. Frank Laubach was a missionary for his church, and he went to the Philippines. And because of the upsets at that time, he wasn't able to get to the villages, but he started working um, little by little and helped the people there. They only had 16 sounds in their language, so it was very easy for him to um, progress, and everybody was learning to read right away. It was wonderful. And um, then he did come back to the States, and unfortunately he did pass away. But he had started it, so it used to be called the Laubach Way to Reading, mm -hmm. and now it's just called the um, Pro-Literacy. And that's changed in about the last, what, 10 years, I guess. So, But it's been a very um, so enlightening experience. I've really, because I was a terrible reader as a child. I moved mm -hmm. to so many schools, and I was sickly. And so when I learned you all this technique. You were from a military technique. family, or how is it? Uh, with the war and Just the depression. Just with the war mm -hmm. and the depression. Yeah. And, and so how did the, he become involved with the Literacy Council, or did he found it? Or? Yes, he was the founder of it, okay. Dr. Okay, Frank Laubach. And then, of course, after he passed away, his son kind of continued it, but then there were other people, bigger businesses decided this was a good thing to, to teach people. Mm -hmm. you know, we've got to mm -hmm. learn to speak English as well as learn to read English. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we have such an influx of foreign born. different Especially languages that come World here, War. that to, yeah. a lot to of communicate. Came home with Do any of you speak a second language to English or a first language? I don't either. I took some French in school, but I really need to go there to learn the language. You do. Yeah. I I I could not have learned. I sort of have a pretty. As sort of a second language, somewhat, I used to say. I'm not sure I'd say that anymore, but without having been there, it would be very, very difficult right. to really. Well, and ironically, so I saw a fellow at the bank yesterday, and he said, I wish you'd tell me how I can teach somebody English. I don't have any of the books. I said, Yes, you do. You have the student's book. All you have to do is open the first page, and it starts out bird. Ask him, What is that? And then tell him, Yes, bird, bird and have him say it over, and we go down, cup, dish, you know, fish, mm -hmm. and he said, I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the, the literacy Pictures. program itself, uh, and this is the, the Laubach method, yes. that it was a very um, successful very. method that he used on the mission field, mm -hmm. and then um, you have some materials, but then the literacy group grew from not only just reading and, and tutoring people in our country who needed help with reading for various and sundry reading uh, uh, reasons, and, and, but then you grew to also a, a citizenship. Mm -hmm. That's true, because we had so many of the sailors and marine soldiers coming back from the war, Second World War, mm -hmm. they needed to teach their 
families how to speak English. Mm -hmm. And so that was a, an open thing for all over the United States, not just here. Right. But that's how we got started over on the base. And we had a big room, and we'd have maybe 60 people in here. What brought you to Ridgecrest? Oh, that's a long story. Oh. <laughs> a okay. friend. A friend. A friend was here. I was already married and had children. Was his last name Young? <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> okay, Joy Young. All right. So uh, who are these two ladies that have been involved with your group and now heading up? Of course, our president mm -hmm. right now. And she's been president, God bless her, for quite a while. But she works on the base, too. And then Diana, that's Diana Eggleton. Diana Eggleton. And then Laura. I don't know how I met Laura. Gosh, she's been with me for years and years. Mm -hmm. So she took oh, over after I left. I had a good friend who just called me up and said, hey, you need to be a literacy tutor. I signed us up for a class with Joy Young. That's exactly how it happened. Yeah. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Laura Monica Justice, that's who <laughs> called me. She took the Laura, class, too. <laughs> Laura does a lot of ESL tutoring yeah. for people who are learning English as a second language. Okay. Yeah, so when I, when I, when I did the, the training, I just fell in love with the, with the ESL group. And I just find it so rewarding. So that's the where I concentrate. Although I did have the literacy training because we have the training for both um, English speaking and becoming a better reader, mm -hmm. as well as not English speaking and becoming a better reader and speaker. Well, in our less than two minutes, then tell us what you love most about working with the English second language portion of it. Well, I, I have to tell you that these people um, that uh, have been my students have been uh, so committed and so um, thankful and grateful for, mm. for the help they have. And plus, there's a negotiation. Um, a lot of them have experienced a lot of um, uh, kind of fight back, you know, when they try to speak English and they're mm. not understood or they have a bad accent and people go, well, I don't understand you. One of my students is was actually a, worked in a medical office as a translator and her mm. family thinks she does not speak very well and she speaks beautifully. <laughs> I'll and, bet she does. And so she comes to class because she says, I feel like I need to be improved and we heart, I mean, she is very, a very good speaker, mm -hmm. but, but she's still learning the structure of the language because and, and ling English is a tough uh, structure tough. of all the languages. Mm -hmm. So we'll get back into some of the issues that come up with uh, all the different things you folks are involved with here mm -hmm. uh, and as we have a short little break. All right? All right, we're back with Ridgecrest Talk, and my guests from the Literacy Council, Diana Eggleton, Joy Young, and Laura Miller. And I think I'll just pick up with Laura. You were talking to us about the English second language portion mm -hmm. and that you just fell in love with it. And so, um, well, what would, do you have any stories you'd like to share with us? Or maybe someone yeah. from an exotic place that you've learned from their well, country? Well, um, I have had the benefit of having all sorts of different types of students. Mm -hmm. and, um, and one of my students, for example, we have a lot on the base. We have some engineers that come from other countries that come here and, um, and speak English, but they don't speak it well. Or they don't feel uh, confident. Or, <laughs> but what happens is that, is that when they get here, all of a sudden we speak in, in um, like a, a, a weird language because we have all these uh, idioms, sure. these things we say sure. that are not what we mean. Like use your head, for example. <laughs> and and they, they just do not, I mean, that doesn't translate. Right. You know, so, so I had um, one of my very first, uh, first students that I was paired with. Joy was running the program then. She paired me with the, um, with the student. He was a, an engineer. And from he, where? From where was he from? God, Peter was from. I thought you were from. From from Asia, someplace, someplace okay, in Asia. Okay, an Asian country. Yeah, and um, and he just he came and uh, and that's what he wanted to study was the idioms. He goes, they said <laughs> this. What did they mean? <laughs> Basically, and he was just a really a real joy to be with. And mm -hmm. he was here for a short term. You know, mm -hmm. he was here for a particular time. So I had that kind of student as well as the student who comes here, uh, who has. 
you know, come here with her husband. Um, most of my students are women, uh, and their their husband is working or whatever, and they realize they're kind of stuck at home unless they can speak English. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so suddenly they really have a high desire to learn. Right. So they can do some of the grocery shopping and things like that. Yes, yeah, mm -hmm. simple things. Simple things we take for granted. Right. You know, and they get stuff in the mail, and they go, I don't know what this means. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you bring it right down to the necessities of what they do day to day and mm -hmm. how, and so it's a, it's a motivation in itself. Yeah. One it's, of the mottos that Frank Laubach had was, each one, teach one. Right. Yeah. I, I learned that from Joy. I remember <laughs> her sharing that with me. And that's a great Yeah. It's, and it, you just develop these wonderful, wonderful friendships. Yes. Really yeah. Mm -hmm. Because teaching someone a language is very very personal. You learn mm -hmm. about them because you have to talk about these things mm -hmm. that are important. So you mm -hmm. learn so much. So it's it's kind of like your your family by the time yeah. you teach someone another language. One of my students had, um, I have a group of students. Most people just choose one or two, but I have a small group. And uh, one of my students had a baby to year and a half ago now, I mm -hmm. guess. And um, so we had all of a sudden all the words for baby, you know, all the, we had a baby shower, we had a, all the oh, words yes. and all the, all the things and, and all the expectations. Great. It was really fun. Oh, it's yes. really fun. Sounds like mm -hmm. fun. So, um, Diana, tell us about uh, how you came to be with the Literacy Council. How long have you been with them? I've been with the group <coughs> for about 15 years. Oh. And I remember I, I called and left a message and then Joy called me back and she was so friendly and so joyous that I knew it was a group that I wanted to belong to. And she taught, she is considered a legendary tutor and she did all of the tutor training. So I went to one of her classes and I started out tutoring in li what we call literacy tutoring or reading improvement tutoring. Okay. Three teenage young women and, but now I don't tutor, I'm more involved in the other aspects of the group, such as one of the things that I do is I order books for our Christmas program. Oh. And in that Christmas program, what we do is we order books from Scholastic, so we get a discount on them, and we give them to <clears throat> the families of people who pick up Christmas food baskets at the Salvation Army on Down Street, mm -hmm. and we, Laura and I normally do this once a year, and sometimes other people, Joy's been involved in it too, and we give books to the children who are in the families, age appropriate, sometimes gender appropriate books, so that they will have their own book, which is very important for a child to have his or her own book, mm -hmm. because then that encourages them to like reading more mm -hmm. and to think about getting more books. And that's one of the programs that we do, and the people and the parents are very appreciative of that, to not just get the food basket, but to get the books for their children at Christmas. Yes, yes, because what a nice right. gift. Right, and another program we have, and these programs were in place before I joined, so they've been in place for years. Mm -hmm. They set up a program in which we give books to the Ridgecrest Regional Hospital so that each new mother who has a baby is given a book so that she can start reading to her children at a very young age. Uh -huh. That's one of our other programs. Um, we also like to attend community events. Mm -hmm. For example, we were at the health fair most mm -hmm. recently mm -hmm. and we were giving away what we call gently used books. Mm -hmm. And we found some parents were saying that all oh, their kids wanted to come here and they were looking for your booth first thing because they remembered from the last time we were there. And so we're, we're hoping that we promote a joy of reading in the community when we go to these events. Community and dinner. Community dinner. And, and yeah. yeah, and we also go to the community dinner. It's called something the else now. Family fun. Well, family fun. Family fun yes. fair or whatever. Right. Okay. And we give in away. Is that in September? Yes. yes. So we have September. a fall and a September. Yes. A fall and spring book giveaway. Right, and we give mm -hmm. gently used books at those, on those occasions, but for the new mothers and for the Christmas baskets, we give brand new books because we know for yes. some children that may be their only present, so we mm -hmm. want to give new books. Oh. And now what are some of the, you said it's Scholastic? Scholastic is the company that we order the books from that we give 
out at Christmas. Now, okay. for the books that the tutors use, we go to Reader's Press for those. Okay. And so for the books you give away, we've got about a less than a minute here before we take a little break. What are some of the titles of those oh, books? Gosh. Oh, well, we've, we've given away Cur Curious George books, for instance, oh, and some of the parents George. said, oh, I remember this. This was one of my favorites. And we your favorite Flat Stanley. Flat Stanley, okay. and we've given away if you if you take a mouse to the oh, movies, yes. which was a sequel to If You Give a Mouse a Cookie by <laughs> Laura Numeroff. Yeah. And those so it's and I think some of these children's books were actually written for the parents uh, because yes. they bring so much joy to adults as well as children. Yes, that's when you know it's a good book when the adult yes. likes it as much as the child. Right. Mm -hmm. One thing I would like to point out is the. Okay. Why don't you uh, tell us what okay. it is and tell us about it when we come back from our break. Okay. What is it? It's the meetings for the ESL tutoring occur every Thursday at 10 o'clock. Okay. Let's at talk about that. 9 o'clock. I'm sorry, 9 o'clock. Okay. <laughs> at the Crossroads Church okay. in what they call the heat. We'll talk about that when Thank we come back from break. Welcome, welcome back to Ridgecrest Talk with the Literacy Council, Laura Miller, Joy Young, and Diana Eagleton. And Diana, you were about to tell us uh, something. And oh, well, I, I, wanted, I wanted to mention that the group that Laura tutors, as well as other students, along with other, tutin, other te teachers, tutors, meet at Crossroads Church on Thursday mornings at 9 o'clock. And so if somebody wants to get a tutor and they want to learn English as a second language, they could just show up mm -hmm. at that time and date and then they would be placed with an English as a second language tutor. How many tutors do you have with <coughs> you now? Do you, uh, well, right now we have about eight um, that are active in ESL tutoring. Uh -huh. We've had, there's a, quite a large list of people who've tutored for some time and then are now retired from right. tutoring. Okay, so yeah. you're strictly the ESL tutoring. Yeah, I do the ESL tutoring. And then just the reading. Of course, if, mm -hmm. if it's a child who needs a tutor, they can't come. So that would be for adults on the Thursday morning? Um, the the Thursday morning is, is for ESL. Okay. Okay. For yeah. Okay. Uh, it is in the summer, there's a break. So mm -hmm. it it starts up again in September. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So right now you're on break. Well, yes, we're on break from the. I'm still meeting my students, but it's based upon my schedule and their right. schedule. Yes. Let's see, so but once September comes around, Thursday mo Thursday mornings again at right. Crossroads Church. Okay. In the Hebrews right. room. And what about someone? I mean, do you tutor if someone wants a tutor for their child or for themselves? Uh, uh, there's a there are adults who who would like help reading, right? Yes, right. Children yes. and adults who want to in, improve their reading. All right. And mm -hmm. we have done tutoring for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They call. Mm -hmm. They'll call us, and then we set up uh, a tutor with them. And okay. so then they're matched, and then see if that's a good match. Sometimes it isn't, but okay. most of the times it is. Okay. So aside from the reading, and aside from the English second language. Um, who, uh, Diana or um, maybe Joy, which would you, we're, we're missing someone from your group who is Esther Cuz, mm -hmm. and yes. she was out of town today, and she does the citizen group course, mm -hmm. and uh, now Joy, you gave me these little notes that she goes over court structure, legislative branch, and the U.S. Senate. And who's in office right now? The book mm -hmm. is made for the, the whole term like the president and so forth and uh, so they learn all about that judicial stuff mm -hmm. and then they learn the the things I even have a map they that we we show them where parts of America are <laughs> you know that they we want them to know the United States mm -hmm. and so that that part of, is in this so they learn a lot about America all right and yes. Esther Cruz normally conducts these classes at the Emanuel Ministry Center, the Emanuel Christian Church it Ministry will be in Center. The paper and the swap sheet too. And it's and, oh, and you were saying it comes up when? Tell us when it comes it's, up. February. It's advertised in February, and now she's teaching the classes in March. Is and my April. understanding? March and April. 
March and April. And on how Tuesday long is night. the course? I'm sorry? Is it eight weeks? I think so. I think it's that about eight about weeks. Right. Yeah, that's and I wanted to mention that Esther does teach some English while she gives the classes. Mm -hmm. And she indicates that by the time the students are finished with the classes, they may be speaking some more English, but it may be with a New York accent because Esther Coos is from New York and she oh. still has her accent. <laughs> that's funny. That's <laughs> cute. Well, that's all right. It's, uh, it's English. So uh, are you familiar? Who's most familiar would like to tell us about the citizenship course? I think that's wonderful. It's exciting. How many people do you usually have go through the program? Sometimes 12, 15. I think they had 18 this 18, year. 18, 18 mm -hmm. last year. Is that year? right? Yes. I think they had it's two years. hour class twice a week for a month. Uh -huh. And they do pay for their own books, and that is about $20 for the books. Uh, for the books. But they get to keep them. And she said she had a folder. I mean, it, the course is free. Mm -hmm. The course yes. itself is she no cost. It. Except the, for the books. Except for the books. And she has a, a, a folder she's mm -hmm. created that has the questions they're going to need to be able to yeah, all answer. the information that the to become know, a citizen they want you to know to yeah. become a citizen yes say the pledge. from the government you know yeah. say the pledge is oh, that what yes. you said yeah. right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. there's all sorts of uh, there's all sorts of different things in that but in that yeah. folder there is an expensive fee that they pay to the United States government to become a citizen yeah. but and what I is that Six hundred dollars. Six eighty-five or six. Uh, yes, yeah, it's between six. Yeah, six hundred and eighty-five. I think. It's pretty expensive. They used to have to go up to uh, Fresno. Fresno, but now they can go to Bakersfield, get their picture, and pay the first eighty-five dollars or something like that. Then, when they're ready, then they let them know they're ready to take the test. And is this at the at the INS or at the court clerk? Office or where uh, do they, they go, Baker's? They they let you know where oh, they're they going let to you hold know it. where it's going to yeah. be. And at that point, you better know your pledge of allegiance. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. And okay. some other questions they do ask. And how many questions did you say there? there Twenty are? is I Twenty. Twenty think. questions. Yeah. So they go over mm -hmm. that. And um, well, what have you found most rewarding about your involvement? You've been involved with it a long time. So Not you're all volunteers. <laughs> you're yes. all volunteers, yes. 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 and all so volunteers. you love it, obviously. Mm -hmm. And what what has been well? I think important? it's it's important to be involved in an organization like this because right now in the United States, about 14 percent of the population only reads at a fifth grade or lower level, and 29 percent reads at an eighth grade level. And so that, that is important. Also, if you look at inmates in prison, according to the most recent statistics I've seen, right now 75% of those in state correctional facilities and 59% of those in federal correctional institutions are classified as low literate. And then as far as... So it has a direct, obviously it's going to have yes. a direct connection to right. what you're going to do mm -hmm. in life. Right, and, and a lot of those people are inmates because they weren't able to get jobs because of their lack of literacy. Mm -hmm. And then as far as young women go, young women who have gone to secondary school are four times less likely to have a child by the time they're 19 than those who are uneducated. And if you look at it worldwide, 16% of the worldwide population is non-literate. And unfortunately, two-thirds of that population consists of women. Mm -hmm. So it's very important in terms of personal economic success for people to be literate, mm -hmm. to stay out of prison, to do well, to take care of their families. It also okay. helps the gross domestic product. Well, I just want to take our last few seconds to thank you ladies for your devotion and really helping people in this um, issue of literacy. I really appreciate your volunteerism. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for, for having us. us. It's our pleasure. It's